Welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. One year ago, when William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagwa took oath of office, they urgently rushed to lift the ban on GMO that had been put by their predecessor Uhuru Kenyatta for a period of 10 years. This move rattled Kenyans and several rights groups, opposition, and, 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 and the Law Society of Kenya condemned this act. And in fact, the Law Society of Kenya went to court challenging the lifting of this ban. Now, this, court, the, this case has been dragging in court for a period of one, one year. And we have been waiting to see what kind of ruling the judiciary would give us. Because the Law Society of Kenya had accused President William Ruto of acting unilaterally without consultation. They had cited that whenever there is a new phenomenon in our country like, you know, initiating GMO and allowing it to be consumed by Kenyans, then there must be public participation because this has been entrenched in our constitution that Kenyans might, must have a say in whatever is being introduced to them because it's going to affect them directly. And there was another argument that we were moving to create a market for the American farmers because it is in the open that GMO is being produced largely in the USA. And even the Farmers Association had complained that when we welcome the introduction of GMO, we are not looking at their interest because we already had surplus in our stores, that yet we wanted to allow the GMO to be imported into the country. And people felt that before this move is authorized, then our technocrats must be allowed to weigh into this debate because there are Kenyans who are still confused about this move. There are a lot of allegations that when you consume GMO, even men will have protruded, protruded breast. But William Ruto said that as a scientist, he can confirm to us that GMO has got no negative effects. Others had been saying that the, uh, the, the spread of cancer disease is as a result of consuming the GMO. So there have been a lot of, 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 of uh, debate around this, and I know some are exaggerated. And this is why the Law Society of Kenya, among other stakeholders, wanted this debate to be subjected on our national TV so that people can know exactly what genetically modified organisms are. Scientists who support this say that when you introduce GMO in Kenya, then they can withstand harsh environmental, you know, harsh climate and environmental conditions. And so they said it is a good thing. But there was another big argument that GMO will automatically kill our cultural crops. Because they said that when you, 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 you plant GMO material after they have killed your cultural you know, you know, crops, and, and, and that GMO cannot be replanted, then it means we will forever be slaves to the, the, the United States of America because we will continue to buy seeds from them. Because now, after they have killed our crops, which could be replanted, then we will depend on them. So these arguments had been put forth. But yesterday, after back and forth and waiting, the Lands and Environmental Court ruled and that court ruling dismissed the case that was challenging the ban on GMO material. Now, Justice Oscar Dangote dismissed this case and he said that we already have structures that will ensure that consuming of GMO is not abused. In fact, we have a body called the Biosafety Regulatory Framework. 
And this biosafety, the National Biosafety Regulatory Framework, has indicated that before one imports or exports or decides to, to, to subject us to consuming of GMO, then they must get a written letter from this body. And the judge also indicated that this body works very closely with the health department that will ensure that we the, 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 the safety of the food that we eat uh, by, by surveillance and supervision. And in his own submission, he said that it cannot be that all these departments and independent institutions can connive and collaborate together to subject us to ill health to subject us to consume that which is not good for our condition. And he said that we must cultivate a culture of trusting our independent institutions. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will officially consume GMO, genetically modified materials. Now my problem is this. Number one, the judge is telling us that all these institutions cannot conspire to, to, to affect Kenyans. I have a problem with that because we all know that we have a kind of state capture that has never been there before. Whether, in fact, let's begin even with, 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 the, with our elections. IEBC and the judiciary connived together and they were reading from the same page. I don't want to go to that discussion, but I want to submit to you that even if it is one or a hundred institutions, they have all been pocketed. IEBC, the courts, whether it is the, 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 the political parties, you know, office, whether it is the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecution's office, the DCI, everything, all these institutions have been pocketed. And the judge cannot tell us that just because there are more than two or three institutions that they, get, that they cannot be pocketed. As long as we still have, as long as the president still has the authority to appoint the judges, he can appoint and, 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 and dismiss, then these people can still swear their allegiance to the executive. Number two, the rush with which William Ruto hurriedly went there to ban the, 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 to lift the ban that had been there for 10 years was really one thing. And I can submit to you that now this adds to the basket of Joe Biden. He's a happy man wherever he is. Because now we lifted the ban on GMO now. All the subsidies were removed. All the taxes have been, have been uh, imposed. Cost of living is just too high. Now the LGBTQ has been passed through the same, same courts. And the, we are now told that the LGBTQ plus community has got freedom of association. In fact, among all the dictates that the US and the Western country had given to William Ruto, there was only one that was pending, and this was the GMO. Now that the GMO has also passed, I can assure that they are home and dry, because I believe that they had signed about the LGBTQ, the GMO, the subsidies and the taxes. All of them have now been passed. In fact, there is one that is now pending the Haiti case that Okuro court took to court. That is uh, dead on arrival. I can assure you that it is going to be, the, the, the judge is going to give the green light because when Joe Biden wants something, it must happen. In fact, the thoughts and feelings of USA, of White House, are being reflected in our country whatever they want will be implemented i told you the other day that we are being governed from washington dc or united kingdom and so ladies and gentlemen this is another win for joe biden and uh, i can assure you that the the, the the william ruto will always put america first we are secondary whatever they want come first then we come second and with this I can only urge our members of parliament to now try to take some, some amendments to parliament so that maybe anybody who wants to export GMO must be forced to label when they are in our supermarket, they must be labeled so that as we do, we know, you know, like I understand that it, it, it happens in the USA that 
it must be labeled so that you know that this is GMO and this is not. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.